Hello everybody, my name is Tino Kim and today I'm coming to you with a different kind of video. So since I started making those videos on the Sava server, people have wanted to know from me what kind of mods I am using to make those videos and how to install them and how to make them work. So uh, this is what I'm going to show you today. This will be a short tutorial specifically for the mods that I am using, which is Optifine, Schematica and the Replay mod and how to install them specifically on this server. But you may be able to use some of the things that I'm telling you on other Minecraft instances as well, if you just adapt some things a bit. So the way I'm going to show you how to install these additional mods is through CurseForge. The reason for that being is that I believe most people are already using the Zava mod pack through CurseForge and if you manage to install it without CurseForge, you probably already know enough about installing mods and I don't need to explain this to you. So to be on the safe side, I recommend that we create a new profile or a duplicated profile of the Omega MC Zava profile that we are using just in case anything goes wrong or we mess anything up. We shouldn't, but better safe than sorry. And you can see I already did that. I have the original mod pack here and then I have the one where I installed the additional mods over here. But of course, I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch. So first we are going to go into the original Omega MC Zava Evolved mod pack and we will do duplicate profile. And what this is doing is it is copying the existing profile, including all the stuff you have saved in there. So like if you have any local save files, if you have taken screenshots and everything that you have already discovered in, on journey map, all of that is going to be copied into the new profile. So it's basically just the same thing as your uh, old profile that you were using before. So we have successfully duplicated the profile, but right now they both look exactly the same. So let's give one of them a descriptive name. So you can see this one is uh, has a two behind it. For you, it's probably going to be a one. For me, it's a two because I already copied it before. We will do profile options and then we can choose a new name that is a bit more descriptive. So let's call it modded Sava. Now that we have the profile that we want to install the additional mods in, we need to open the folder that this is installed in. So let's click on the three dots again and do open folder. So here we have the folder that our Minecraft instance is installed in and the most important thing in here for us is the mods folder. And the mods that you can see in here are the ones that will originally belong to the Omega MC Zava Evolved mod pack and we are going to add a few more. So in this folder, I have collected all the files that we are going to need to install Optifine, Replay Mod and Lightmatica. And for all of these, it's super important that we have the right version. So we, of course, need the 1.16.5 version of all of those mods so that they will work well with the Zava mod pack. For Replay Mod, there's only a 1.16.4 version, but this one works very well as well. I am, of course, course going to put all the download links into the description. So for Optifine we only need one single file which is the Optifine 1.16.5 something something dot jar and then if we want to use Optifine to install shaders of course we also need the shaders but that is something that comes later. So first let's start by moving Optifine to the mods folder. If we want to install Lightmatica, we need both the Lightmatica for Forge file as well as the Malilib for Forge uh, file, which is a library that has some functions that Lightmatica uses. So let's move both of those over as well. And then for replay mod, we only have the one mod file but we also need to install FFmpeg, which is the, I believe, the render engine that ReplayMod uses to render videos of replays that you've taken. So first step is just same as all the other ones, very easy, moving the jar file to the mods folder. And then we first need to extract 
the FFmpeg zip folder and once we've done that we need to take the content of that folder which is yeah <laughs> the same folder again and we need to install it in the main folder of our Minecraft instance. So let's go one folder level up here and just move the entire thing over there. So this is the only thing that deviates a little bit from how we would normally install mods. Really, usually when you want to install additional mods, just move everything into the mods folder. Just make sure that it's a .jar file. And of course, be careful about <laughs> compatibility and things like that. But I promise you for the three mods that we are discussing today, how to install them, they are all compatible with each other and also with the Zava mod pack. So now that we've installed the additional mods, let's start Minecraft and see what happens. So if we press play now, we're going to get a warning. Let's just ignore that and continue. So if we go into options and video settings, we can see if Optifine has installed correctly. So just for com a quick comparison, this is what it looks like without Optifine installed. And now this is what this menu looks like with Optifine installed. And I'm not going to go into the details of all the things we can adjust in here. Um, you're going to have to figure that out on your own or somewhere else. But the reason I'm explaining how to install Optifine is because I always get asked about shaders and that is something we can do here. So we have this button here that says shaders and right now we don't have any installed but down here we can open the shaders folder and that is going to open the folder shader packs in our instance folder and what we can do now is take a zip file of a shader that we have downloaded previously and my favorite shader pack is co the complementary shader pack and just move the entire zip file into the shader packs folder. Now if we go back into the game I guess we probably have to go into that menu again and now we can see the shaders that we have just installed in there and yeah let's have a look at the game with shaders. So <laughs> what we need to do is we just click on the shader zip file that we want to select and then it's going to take a little bit. So the game is going to take some time and probably look like it's frozen. At least it does for me. I don't know how fast your computer is, but it just takes a little time for Minecraft to activate the shaders because there's a lot of stuff that it needs to load. And by the way, I do not recommend activating or deactivating shaders while you are actually on the Zava server. At least for me in 90% of cases that just results in the game crashing. I don't know what it is, but yeah, do it in the hub or in a local world instead if you want to add or remove shaders from the game. And there we had it. Let's click done. And now we have shaders activated and we can see how pretty all of this looks with shaders on. Game is a little bit framey for me right now. I think it's probably still loading some stuff in the background. But yeah, I mean, using shaders definitely does more load to your graphics card. So you need to check if your computer can actually handle it, but it does definitely improve the graphics a lot. However, for the sake of this video, I'm going to turn the shaders off again because the other mods in some parts don't work very well with shaders and I'm going to mention that again probably. So if you're working with Lightmatica, definitely turn off shaders and for the replay mod as well, it can be advisable to not be using shaders. There are some issues that can occur with shaders. And as I said, I'm going to tell you that when we come to those mods. Yeah, and this is basically it for how to install shaders. There are different types of shaders. You can try out different ones to see which ones you like best. Some people like BSL. There's also Sildur shaders. I'm going to put the download for complementary shaders into the description. And for all the other ones, I trust that you are able to Google them yourself. So now that we've de deactivated the shaders again, let's go and connect to the server and have a look at the other mods.
Okay, everyone, now it's time to talk about the replay mod. You can see in the top left corner of my screen that there is a recording sign, which means that replay mod is currently recording. There are ways to remove that indicator if you'd rather not have it, but it can be quite useful. So one very useful feature of the replay mod are the event markers, where you can just at a specific time when something exciting happens, put a little marker and in your replay, this will appear as a little red dot. And the default key for that is the M key. But if I press that, we're going to see that we have an issue in a little second. So if I press M, that also brings up the Lightmatic GUI. So I usually reassign the key for the event marker to a different key. So if we go into options and controls and then scroll down to replay mod, we can see we have M as the event marker and N as the capture thumbnail. So I usually just set N as the event marker because I don't use the capture thumbnail thing anyway. Um, so let's just reset that to something that we are not likely to, to need. So now we can use N to set uh, event markers and you can see in the chat window that uh, yeah, these event markers are being added. So if we open our options, we can see that we can pause the recording. Now it says paused and resume the recording and we can also stop the recording and start a new one. Both of these things are very useful. So usually before I start a building something that I want to create a time lapse of, I stop the recording that has potentially been running already for two hours and just start a new one so that I then can just work with the recording that only contains my time lapse and not two hours of content before that. And pausing and resuming is also very useful. I mostly use it in one specific case and I'm going to demonstrate that to you in a second. And for that, I need to explain to you what exactly is happening uh, in the replay mod. So what the replay mod does is that it constantly records uh, everything that is within all the chunks that are loaded around you, everything that is happening, how the animals are moving and also all the states of the blocks, of course. But that also means that everything that is not loaded, that is beyond the horizon, so to say, is not part of what is being recorded in the replay mod. And so when I'm doing a time lapse, for example, on this gas station, and I realize that I'm running out of items and I need something new and I need to go far away to my storage building, then this area is going to be unloaded and in the replay mode we won't see anything. And I'm going to demonstrate how that looks. But usually what I would do in such a case is just pause the recording, go get the stuff, come back and then resume the recording. So let's just stop this recording right here and start a new one. And I am going to go to my storage building and just stay there for a little bit for the area to become unloaded. And then later we can see in the replay how that is going to look. Okay, we are back at the gas station and now we can leave the game and look at our recording. So what we need to do now is wait for the replay files to uh, finish and it finish saving and it should be two. Yeah, so the second one is after I restarted the replay. And it is really important for those files to be saved and for you to click done. If you don't do that, the next time you open the game, you will be prompted and asked if you want to recover your replay. The issue with that is I have had that cause issue with some of the replays. So it's definitely safer to just uh, save them like this. What you can do and what I recommend doing uh, immediately <laughs> is um, giving them a proper name so that you will remember what is in there because otherwise you're just going to have files named after numbers. And then the one that we don't need, we can just instantly delete. And if we click done like this, then only this one will be saved with this name. This one will be deleted. If we accidentally click delete, but don't actually want to delete it, we can just go in here and give it a different name. And then both of those will be saved. So the place where we can find the replays is here in this little menu in the replay viewer. So first, while we're in here, let's just go into the settings real quick 
and here is the recording indicator. If we don't want to have that in the top left corner of our screen, we can just turn that off. Um, then we won't always know if we're recording. We'll have to go into the settings for that. But yeah, if you're recording a video at the same time as recording on replay mode, it makes sense to have that off. Otherwise, it can be useful to have it on. Now let's look into the replay that we recorded. So uh, yeah, usually takes a little time to load everything. And as soon as it's loaded, I usually like to press P because the replay just starts playing immediately. Yeah, you could see the little yellow indicator at the top. Let me press P again. Yeah, it starts running immediately and I don't want that. So I'm not going to give you very detailed instructions on how to create the perfect time-lapse render because Pixelriffs has already done a really good video on that and I'm just going to link his video down in the description and also if I remember to do it in a little pop-up card right here. But I am going to show you just basically how it works and also some tips and tricks that I did not see in his video that I have figured out. So first, now if I move my mouse, I um, basically in a spectator view, I can also move with the WASD keys. And yeah, if I move my mouse, my field of vision moves around. So if I want to touch the GUI in some way, first I need to press T and that locks the screen in the position that I was in and gives me a cursor. So now I can use that to go back to the beginning here. And yeah, that again takes a little moment to load. And now I have the opportunity to show you something else very uh, useful because that happens sometimes. So right now we are still in the same camera position that we were earlier, just above the storage building. But I, as a player, am at this point in the replay over at the gas station. So the place where we are is just simply not loaded. So it looks like we are kind of in the void. We just have some clouds above us. And I have noticed that this sometimes happens when you open a new replay file as well. I believe it's just because it saves the camera position that you were at the last time you used replay mod. And we can fix this very easily. We just have to click B, which brings up the player overview. And we can click on our name to spectate player. And now I am inside my head, which means that I can't move because I'm going to follow the movements that me as the player that is recorded is currently doing. So to get out of that, I just press shift and you see I am moving out of myself. And here I am and here we are at the start of our replay. So as I said, I just want to show you like the very basic, most basic things you need to do to create a video and I'll leave the rest to pixel riffs. And I also want to show you what happens if we move out of the place where we are currently recording. So for the start of the replay, I'm just going to choose a nice view of the gas station. I'm going to press T to lock this in. And then I can put at this point in the, this is the timeline of the recording uh, of the replay that we uh, in the end want to render. And this is the entire recording. So to say that it should start at exactly the beginning and not some point later, we need to create a time keyframe that links those two times together. And I also want a position keyframe. So this is now the camera position at this at the beginning of this replay video. Um, then I want to turn up the speed, not completely. It goes up to eight. You can also make faster replays than that. Uh, Pixel Riffs is explaining how to do that. Um, but let's go with a four times speed. And now we can start playing and it, it, it will play at four times the speed. So now I am moving away back there. And you can see that the world around starts disappearing. And of course, this is going to look very ugly in a video. It doesn't actually com uh, disappear completely, so maybe I wasn't far enough away. But yeah, <laughs> you don't want that happening. So that is a point in time where you would use the pause and resume feature. So to create a replay of the entire scene, I'm going to, to be able to move the camera again, press escapes, but then the, the cursor disappears and I can move around again. And choose a different position, like maybe from this side. And this is where the camera should end. So I am again pressing T and then creating another time keyframe and position keyframe. 
So now we can see the path that the camera takes. So it starts at the back there and it moves over here and it currently moves in a straight line. And if we want to add a bit of a curve, we can add another camera position over here, for example, and put that in the middle here and say that this should be about at this point in the recording. Ah, and in this view, we see that currently there actually isn't anything. It just stayed loaded in the recording that we had uh, <laughs> when we played it earlier. Uh, the area stayed loaded for a little bit longer, but apparently there's nothing here right now. Anyway, I want to show you what happens if I add another camera point position keyframe here. Let's take a look at that. Um, we can now see that the camera makes a nice smooth curve instead of moving in like a jagged manner. So let's take a look at our entire recording and how the camera moves. For that, we move this position back here and then we click on play. It's going to take a quick moment to load. And there we have it. Camera makes a nice smooth round. Some of the chunks are staying loaded, but some are being unloaded in this moment. And we curve back around while my little player is coming back. And that is all. And one nice thing that we can do now before we render the entire thing is if we want to have shaders on for this, even though we didn't have shaders on during recording or now during uh, the editing of the replay, we can just turn them on uh, anyway. I'm not going to do that now, but we do have the ability to just turn it on and then do the render and then have a nice replay with um, with shaders on. Uh, don't ask me what that thing is doing there right now. Um, I'm getting some weird effects from this sometimes. Don't worry too much about this. Anyway, to render this, we are going on render camera path and then you can choose a file name and just go on render but I'm not going to do that right now. Pixrefs also explains a little bit in more detail on how to do that. There is one other pitfall that I just thought about that I wanted to tell you about. So if we go into a place, I mean, I have everything <laughs> lit up very well, but here in the middle of the road is a dark spot. So if we have a recording that is, for example, at night, we can activate something like night vision. Let me go into this menu for a second and here we can see all the um, key presets and we do have Y for toggle lighting. Let me do that and you can see now everything is bright. This does not work with shaders unfortunately. So that is one of the pitfalls here. If you work with shaders, sometimes I just skip the nights by using uh, pause and resume or you have to brighten them up in uh, post-processing. But if you uh, render your video without shaders, you can use this. So the second and more important issue with this uh, night vision mode that the replay mod has is um, it doesn't let me turn it back off. So only use it if you really need to use it. And unfortunately, this is going to carry over into the main game. But there I have found a way to uh, fix this issue. <laughs> so I'm going to show you that way. I just, I hope I'm not confusing or scaring you too, too much by telling you this. I just wanted you to know um, about some of the most common issues that I have encountered and how to fix them. So I am back on the actual Sava server and you can see the middle of the road here is still bright even though it's covered and we don't have any torches. And <laughs> The way I found to fix this is to go into the options, video settings, turn down the brightness. We can see the brightness went down. And now if we turn the brightness back up, somehow this resets the entire thing. And now we have this dark spot again in the, um, in the middle of the road. Okay, finally, let's talk about Lightmatica. And I want to preface this by saying that I am for certain not an expert on Lightmatica. There are a lot of things about it that I don't understand yet, but 
my issue was that I found the tutorials that I found online to be very difficult to follow. <laughs> I didn't really get them very much and I have kind of been able to figure out a way for me to use Lightmatica that works for me and I'm just going to show you what I do so maybe this will help some of you out. But uh, please don't hate on me in the comments if you find my way of using Lightmatica to be a very noobish. <laughs> That's completely possible. And if you can do it better, then uh, good on you. And I would love to see a proper tutorial for Lightmatica that I am actually able to follow and understand. First, let's have a quick look at a Lightmatica tool, the stick you can see in the bottom left corner that this is giving us some options for Lightmatica. And I have not been able to get that to work. So in theory, I think we should be able to use the stick, for example, to select an area for the schematic that we want to create. It is possible that the fact that on the server we can also use sticks to inspect claims interferes with this. So I do not recommend using the stick method. So the way I like using uh, Lightmatica is using the GUI, which we can open with M <laughs> like we did earlier. As far as I know, you can also use it uh, using lots of uh, key combinations and shortcuts, but I don't want to memorize all of those. And we have everything we need right here. So as I said, I'm just going to show you what works for me. So first, um, I don't know how the area selection mode normal works. So I'm going to switch this to simple. <laughs> this is a very good start. And then I'm going to go into the area editor. And we can give this a name, let's say church, because we are going to select the church. And then we have two corners and this is going to create a three-dimensional box. So um, let's for this just say move to player. And now one of the corners of the box is here where we were. And the other uh, end is apparently at 0, 0, 0, which is not useful for us. So now we are going to go kind of to the other end of the church and create the other corner here. So let's do M, area editor, and move the second corner to myself. And now let's have a quick look at this. So uh, yeah, if we want to include the tree, we'll have to uh, expand this for a little bit. Then it is one too high. We need to lower this and we can uh, edit all of this now. Uh, let's just not get in the way of the zombies. But basically, if we look at this, if we go back into the area editor, we have the ability to shift these things a little bit. So if I want to move the Y level of the bottom corner down a bit, I will right click on here. And now it's level with the bottom of the church. We can also move it to the left a little bit. And now I don't know if that's X or Y. No, it's... Yeah. I usually just play around until I have the box exactly where I want it. As I said, this may not be the best way to use Lightmatica, but it is what works for me. So this one we need to extend out a bit. Yeah, exactly. Now the other side, let's also extend this out just a little bit. Like this. And I don't care about that tree right now. <laughs> so now we have a box. It's a bit taller than it needs to be, but that doesn't matter because there's just air above that. So now if we want to save this as a schematic, we can just go back into the area editor and say save schematic. Let's give it a name, church v1, save schematic. And it's now in our schematics folder. This is an actual folder within the uh, the Minecraft instance folder that we played around in earlier. So you can actually see that as a file there. Okay, now let's use this mostly empty space down here to place the church in the world, the schematic, so that we have instructions in case we want to have two identical churches in this city. The way to do that is to open the Lightmatica menu again click on load schematics and now we only have the church saved in here right now and make sure that this is ticked, create a placement and we are loading the schematic. Okay, 
successfully loaded to memory uh, and a placement was created. So now this church right now is exactly here. Um, so this already worked quite well, but if it's in the wrong place or we need to turn it around or move it up and down, we can basically do the same thing that we already did. So go back to the menu. Now we go on schematic placements. We have, this is called unnamed right now, but it doesn't matter. Let's do configure. And now we can, for example, say we want to rotate this by uh, 180 degrees and you can see it's rotating around that specific point. So now we can use these to move it into exactly the place that we want it to be. And something that can easily happen is that, for example, the schematic gets placed underground. Then we can just move it up and down as well, however we want it. If we don't want to use the schematic right now, we can just say placement off and then it's going to disappear. And as soon as we want to work with it again, we can turn it back on. Now, let me show you some tips and tricks on how to work with the schematics. Now, if our cursor is pointing at a specific block, we can see in the top right what kind of block it is and also in what state it is in. But I find the font to be very small, so first we can turn that up. Um, let's go into the schematic configuration menu and I believe this is under visuals. There's a lot of things to do here. It sometimes takes me a bit to find what I want to see. It is info overlays, I think, that we need. So I believe it's this one here, info overlays, block info lines, font scale. Let's change that to one, 1 1.5 maybe. Oh, that is fairly big. Okay, that is too big. Let's change it to one. Okay, yeah, that is looking good. So here we can now see that this is a cobblestone wall and that it is connected to the east. So one way that uh, Schematica is going to give you information about what is already placed is by color. So if I place a cobblestone wall here now, the color is orange because it is the right type of block, but it's not in the right state because currently it doesn't connect to anything because we haven't placed the block next to it yet. So if I place this block, um, yeah, it's still orange because it's not connected to the top. Um, so I can place another one up here. Now, this is red because it's the wrong block. This should be a rocky stone wall, not a cobblestone wall. But this one is now in the right state because it's connected to the top and to both of these uh, blocks. So with a huge schematic like this, you may be wondering, how do I even start working on this, right? And one way to make this easier is to not show the entire schematic, but to instead show only specific levels of it. So if I go into the configuration menu and say render layers, I can go to either single layer or what I like to use is all below and move this to what level are we on right now? Something like 70, yeah. So we can move this down to only show like the lowest layer of this, of the schematic, build this first, then go back into the configuration menu, move this up one, then another one and so forth and move this, bu build this building layer by layer, which makes this a lot easier. And you'll find if you look at uh, time lapses that some other YouTubers do, they often build their buildings layer by layer. And I believe that that is usually because they're using a schematic to do it. Another very helpful tip that sometimes can make it easier to build is we can uh, make those blocks that are not there yet translucent, which makes it sometimes easier to see which blocks are already there and which aren't. That is also in the configuration menu under visual visuals and then render blocks as translucent. So if I set this to true, you see nothing happens. That is usually the case, but we can fix this 
by going into schematic placements, removing the placement and then returning it. And you can see now the blocks are translucent. They are less easy to see. It's less easy to see now, especially if you have lots of similar blocks like I did here. So which one is the stone brick, which one is the cobblestone brick and so forth. Um, but yeah, it does sometimes make it easier. So yeah, use this if you need it. And by the way, you can see I've been using a chipped cobblestone block here. Uh, that also works perfectly. So I haven't had any issues with Light Magica using any blocks from the other mods that we have. <laughs> so I said earlier, I don't like using the key shortcuts of Light Magica because that's uh, so much to, to remember. But this is actually the best way I have found to do that. So to get rid of the white box that we now have around our church and also of uh, the schematic that we have placed, if you just want a very quick way to get rid of both of those, just uh, press M and R at the same time and you are rid of everything schematic related and have a nice clean area to play with again. Well, everyone, I really hope that this video has been helpful to you. I definitely remember that figuring out all those things was a bit difficult for me at the beginning. So I'm hoping that I can spare you, all of you some pain and that maybe you can learn from also the mistakes I made and from all the, all the pitfalls and other things that I found. So let me know if you found this useful and also if you still have some questions that have not been covered. Feel free to put those in the comments and I will try to help you out. But as I said, I am certainly not a professional at using these mods, specifically uh, Lightmatica. I still find really tough and confusing sometimes. But anyway, it is a very useful mod. All of these are very useful mods. And so I found it worthwhile to make a video about that. And I really hope that it does help some of you out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye bye.